So the next thing that I want to do is to integrate tally. And um, that means that we uh, we need to assume something about the um, um, the uh, the buttons. We, for instance, we could say Canon is likely to be camera number one on our ATEM switcher. So I would like this one to reflect tally on, on that camera. So I want to build that up um, right now. So let's just click on this action here. And then once again, we, we sort of have to expand what is happening inside of set value. So I will just go here and then I would add additional conditional feedback, which is um, as I basically want to have a green color if um, and I put in a condition to say, okay, on the device call ATEM switcher, if my previews input video source is equal to ME number one, then um, no, no, no. Yeah, this is why I put in the value. The, the other thing I selected down here is which ME, yeah. So now this is gonna be green. Let's just go to ATEM software control real quick. So we, we see that on preview, yeah, something, yeah, like that. Preview, it gets green when input number one is on preview. That's awesome, that's super cool. So if I create a conditional feedback more with index 30, now notice these are sorted and I need the program, the red one, I want that to dominate over the, the green one. So this is why that has to have index number 30, otherwise it would be swapped around. No, yeah, I need to expand it, but I'm kind of doing the same right now. I'm just picking red as my color and the active if condition is if my ATEM program, let's search that up, program input source, or actually the, the real thing that you should do is using tally, tally by source tally flags. That's the one that you wanna use. And here we are basically picking our source, like if uh, input number one, and I don't know why it's not shown there, that's kind of weird, but if input number one is selected and we uh, it, and it's on program, program tally, then this is gonna be true. So in this case, this is, this is a true false value and I need to type that in here, true in that case. And that should give me my tally for program. Let's try that out. Yes, it did. And if I go here with preview, I don't see green because program tally is dominating. Okay, so um, I messed things up a little bit here. I should probably go correct. No, wait, 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 wait. Actually, I can show you why you want to use the tally that I was talking about because if you have a key like this one, and let's say that you are on upstream key number one, you have Luma settings that are using camera number one, and then if you turn that key on, you get red tally on the source that is associated with the key. This is why you cannot just check if the tally is associated, or if, if the source is on your program bus on a given ME. You want to know if it is live, and that could also be via a key. This is why you should do it this way. So to be absolutely um, consistent, we should go and change this one over. So it's also using tally by source, and then input number one, preview in this case. And that should also, if that is true, then we are lighting up. Okay, so we need to type that in. And we should now see that this is working for both. Oh, actually, in the very first episode, we also applied tally on the switcher side. We used program and preview buses. So you should also convert those. Convert those. Um, but I will leave that as an exercise for you. And we just need to quickly check here if uh, it's all working as we expect. Um, let's just take the key off. So like that. Okay, that is um, working. Is this working? Yes, it is. So I got it corrected to work the way I want on the feedback down here. Notice actually how these are just changing the color, the intensity of the button is associated with whether or not the um, um, it, it is uh, correctly selected. So uh, let me just quickly show you that. We go to simulation mode. Um, notice that now we have it highlighted here. So if we go to ATEM software control, it's also highlighted. And if I pick one of the other cameras, it is now dimmed once again. So that's also um, in place. 
Now, that tally function should be used by the other ones as well. So in fact, what we want to do here is to create a master behavior for this one. And um, one of the things that I find problematic right now is that if we look at the behavior A10, if we look at this behavior, we um, we have just a constant, which is associated with a page. But now that we're adding tally, we would like to have a constant that is associated with the input on the switcher. So we should actually add a constant to the parameter. And I think the first thing that I might want to do is to go here and just create the master behavior at first. So what about cam select for that and pick a 10 create. So now I have this uh, cam select behavior right here. And then I want to go up here and then basically relate this one to cam select behavior. So just choose that one. Then I need to insert my good old match value once again. Okay, so that is in place. In other words, I'm now driving this behavior based on that. Um, did I, I actually added some conditional feedback for this one. And since, you know, normally we just scrap the behavior and create a new one. So like do it all over again. Uh, so I can remove these two because they are um, inherited from my master behavior cam select down here. Now, the thing is that the Panasonic select is a master behavior also drawing on set value, while cam select is a master behavior drawing on set value. So in fact, what we want is the Panas select to draw on cam select that draws on set value. So you see, we're now creating master behaviors from master behaviors from master behaviors, okay? And yes, I want to proceed. So basically what happened here is that as I change the panel cell master behavior to uh, inherit from cam cell master behavior, I now see that I have red tally. I can do my camera select. You see these numbers are following along exactly as they are supposed to. That's super nice. But none of them, I mean, they are all taking tally from the wrong sources. We have a few options here. If you want to do that tally thing, then what you would basically do is to go in here and change that number one for number two here and number three here. But it would be cooler if we could do this with constants, right? So what we want to do is to introduce a constant for the input source. I also want to introduce a constant for the Panasonic cameras to point at the correct camera instead of having 10 hard coded into these two. So adding these constants is actually possible using the inspector over here. That big green button called add constant definition is what we need. And uh, we actually need to invent a constant ourselves now. And for, let me see, input, switcher input, I want to just call it switcher input. So the switcher source to derive tally from. Yep. And then we need to pick a type that is typically an integer and we confirm that. So now we have this switcher input constant here. It's on the master behavior called cam cell. But notice what happens if we go to A10, A20, and A30. We see that these behaviors, they now have the switcher input constant. So let's just quickly go at this. Just say input number one, two, three. Okay, how do I know that these are number one, two, and three? And what if it was color bars? I'll tell you how. If you go to home screen, you go to ATEM config, you use parameter list here then you get all the parameters for ATEM devices. You can even find your ATEM mini, like in my case. So you can sort of go down this column and then see, you know, what is supported for the ATEM mini. So what I'm looking for is actually sources. So somewhere like if, if I search for program inputs, no, wait, actually it would be tally, right? Tally source, let's just search up tally. Tally source, by source tally flag. Sorry for that stupid name, but there's probably good technical reasons for having it like that. You see, this is the dimensions, the values that are possible for the ATEM. So you can, it's these numbers that you're going by. So if I want color bars, if I want color, these are the numbers that I need to pick. Okay, and one and two for program and preview. So that's that's good to know. I In this case, you need to know it. Sometimes we have nice drop downs. Sometimes you need to go and know the value from this list, either because we haven't come to embedding that yet, or just because this is actually the underlying value that the device call protocol is using. Uh, and that reminds me, 
that you should, you know, just for tally by source flex, that that parameter used for bringing tally over to the PDC side is, uh, you know, it says binary control. Uh, it's a binary value, and this is why it's true or false that you compare it to. While if you if you uh, use tally by comparing the value of program input source. Okay, preview input source. I found it here. Program input source is right after. If you look at this one, it says um, it, this is basically the the values that you can select for it. So it will return these integer values and not true or false. So that was a little bit of a difference between these two things. Okay, now you know where you can find that. Let's move back here and finish up this configuration, the master behavior that we are creating. So uh, for these, I have set it to switch input number one, number two, and number three, and then. Um, I now need to modify my master behavior for cam select. So I will go to that master behavior and let me see, we had in show more, we had these conditional expressions here. So inside of those, we need to use this constant instead of the um, one of the values over here. So we'll go in here and then for, let me see, what is it? it uh, we have program preview, that's all fine, but it's this input source that we need to take from a behavior value which would be a constant. And that constant, we called it switcher inputs. All right, just do that. And that was the one. And then the other one, we need to do exactly the same. Edit this one, change it to a behavior value, pick constant, type in switcher inputs. That's it, all right, submit. Submit now. I feel a little bit like checking, just quickly checking. But you can see that the first dimension is now substituted by this text string, which is a valid way to retrieve the value of the switcher input constant. <laughs> and guys, you already see the results, right? They are right here. We are already, because we put that constant value in for these three, we are already picking it up in our conditional feedback. <laughs> this is so awesome. I mean, I get amazed about this myself, but it's just working exactly as it should. So that's that's super cool. Um, yeah, and now uh, it's kind of the same thing we want to do on the panel select down here. So there we'll also add a constant definition and call it panel cam. So that is also an integer that I want to, um, to you know, pointing to Panasonic device ID, okay? Just make this little description for myself, and that is now coming out in the, in the UI right there. How do I use that? Well, in the oh, let me see. Um, when we're using this to select the camera, we had this additional camera selector, and inside of that one, we had the set values. So the set values is currently a literal value, but we want to change that over to a behavior that should be the constant, and that constant should be uh, Pana. Panacam? Was it Panacam? What was it? Yeah, Panacam. All right. So now even that should be in place, right? Oh, I'm excited about trying this out. Let's let's go. It, it seems to work. I mean, we can see the values reflected here, although there is that value that doesn't work. And also this value is not working true here. Yeah. Okay, so let's just let's just quickly go and check this one out. The the selector for the Canon camera, this behavior, has the match value and the switcher input constants. If we go to A20 and 30, you see that it also has the Panacam. But no value was entered, so I'll just type in, let's type in nine. That's wrong, but it means as I'm pressing this one, it's gonna set this one to nine, but it should be 10. Okay, so we know it works. We just try that and it says 10. But when I click here, it says 20, but if I go here and if I set it, it's not even set. And if I type in 34, then it's still gonna give us 20, you know, 10, 20. Why is that? Well, because we did not properly clean up this one when we created it. When we made this behavior A30 depending on our master behavior, we actually had, or maybe we created it out of that, but this event handler is that we need to remove it so that this value 20 is not hard coded for the behavior, but it is actually taken from our, you know, the constants that we have put into the master behavior. So click. And now you see that it's taking it from a constant. Let's try it. See, it says 34. This is what we need to correct. It should be 20, of course. 
and it will work with our camera. So guys, you see, we have created master behaviors that inherit from master behaviors. We have added constants into those master behaviors to basically make it possible to not care about what is underneath show more, but you can configure everything from up here using the constants that is easy to set up. That's actually our vision for how you can have behaviors for parameters where you can identify the individual settings that you want people to interact with and have them broken out in an easy to use interface instead of having going, going down here. So you can also imagine that you yourself build up libraries of master behaviors that enable you to reuse and just provide constants for quick and easy setup. That's probably what happens over time as you become more and more um, proficient with configuring in Reactor.